It's been over 20 years since Illinois won more than 10 games in football, so today I'm going to attempt to fix the fighting Illini, but it will not be easy because I can only recruit players from Indiana and Illinois, I can only play three regular season games a year myself, and I only have five years to complete all six of these challenges, which are have a winning record versus rivals Northwestern, win a Big Ten championship, win a Heisman, make the college football playoffs, win a national championship, and have a top 25 recruiting class, which might sound easy, but I can only recruit players from two states. Anyways, if I fail just even one of these challenges, I have to give away $100 to one of you all, and I'm gonna hop straight into things as the first thing I'll be doing is building up a good recruiting class. Somehow the number two player in the country is interested in coming here, but after that there's a pretty steep drop off in the talent, and so I can't target players that are only interested in coming here, I'm gonna have to really try to branch out since we can only recruit in two states, which is gonna make things extremely difficult. Now the menu might say that we're ranked 16th in the country, but there is no way with a team that only has 7 Seven players over 80 overall that we actually finished that well. It looks like Donovan Leary could end up being our future along with some of these other freshmen, and I don't know if this guy's Devin Leary's brother, but he has 43 speed. I'm not sure how that's even possible, but our first game is at Alabama. I think we all knew how that was going to go, but it's okay. This is a five-year rebuild, so we still have plenty of time to improve this team and build up some good recruits coming into the program, and after a few weeks of recruiting, I would be lying if I told you all that the recruiting board was where I wanted it to be. It could end up being a long season for us, and against Akron, of course we end up losing by 21. I told you all this team was no good, so... Maybe you'll believe me now, I'm pretty much just going to sim to the end of the year, and the only time I might hop into a game this season is when all of these recruits are scheduled for a visit. So as you can imagine, this year is going pretty terribly, especially because we lost to Nebraska, but against 2-4 and four Wisconsin, I feel like we have a chance, and I have everybody scheduled for a visit this week. Now there are some positives as we've already landed the number two player in the country, Martin Butler, somehow. I really don't know why he committed here, but he's from Illinois, he has great stats, and hopefully that'll be enough to entice all of these players to commit after this week, but we are going to have to win this game, and since this is a 74 overall team, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Getting them off the field early would be huge, and that's going to be a stop, so you know what, we need to take advantage of that. It certainly will not be easy with a 43 speed quarterback, but we're just going to have to throw dots, and so far, so good as Donovan Leary has been finding all the open receivers, giving us an early 7 point lead. Unfortunately, they're about to respond back though, and he is wide open. If we are going to win a game, it is going to have to be today. Come on, McCray. I need you to get into the end zone, and I think this play action is going to work. Surely someone's open. Great read. I don't, why'd I say great read? That was a terrible read. The entire game just turned around. Please, one of these linemen catch him. There's no way any of them are fast enough. I am so bad at this game. I do not want to talk about it at all. However, the swerve on the kickoff return is going to work, and you know what? Hollins might go all the way. Does he have the speed? He, he, he is. He does have the speed. What a play. That's how you respond right back. And with three minutes remaining, we're still in this game. It is 35 to 35. Braylon Allen is breaking free here, though. We're going to need to bring him down. And all we realistically need is one more stop on Wisconsin, which is going to be hard to get if Braylon Allen's going to continue to shed tackles. Our entire recruiting class is dependent on how this game ends. And on third down, I was there. But we're going to give up a touchdown. So it's all going to come down to one final drive. And if we get into the end zone, I am going for two. About a minute remaining now. I don't even know how it's possible to roll out with a 43 speed quarterback, but he gets to the 40. And on this play, I'm hoping we have a man deep. I'm just going to sling it up. Hope he comes down with it. He does. And he's going to shed a tackle down to the 17, putting us in a much better position. Now we only need a few more yards. I really need to stop rolling out with Leary. He is not fast at all, but that's okay. All that matters is if we win this game, he's throwing a laser and I might've let the clock wind down a little bit too much, but we're going gonna get into the end zone or not. Apparently he was marked short, so we have got to go for this here, and that's got to be a dot. How do you drop that ball? I don't want to run it because we don't have timeouts. I will run it on fourth down, but I'm going to pass here, and that is a bad read. It's over. We're not going to get any of the recruits on the visit. What a terrible ending. And I should have just risked it with a QB sneak. Well, this is going to be a year to forget for Illinois fans, especially because I accidentally simmed the Northwestern game, which makes our first challenge even harder to complete. So you'd think this rebuild would be in trouble, especially because two freshmen are transferring out. But I'm trying to do the best that I can with this recruiting class. And it turns out that even though I'm recruiting from only two states, 
Signing a top 25 recruiting class is not that difficult. We come in at 14 with all of these amazing players, and that'll complete the first challenge of the video. I mean, in all honesty, there's only a few good players in this class, so I'm not quite sure why it ranks so high, but I can promise you one thing, you will not see me complaining about it. It also seems like the offseason went great as we have a 94 overall receiver, Donovan Leary's up to an 86, and we got a brand new defensive coordinator, which is going to boost all of our defensive players' stats by a ton. The real important thing though will be this recruiting class and it looks like we have 58 players to choose from Illinois and in Indiana we have another 34 along with the number two player in the country being interested in coming to our program again. There are so many highly rated prospects that we get to go after this season and they're saying that we're going to finish last in our division but I don't see how that could happen. We should start the season with a win against Southern Illinois which we do by 21 and I would love to say that recruiting was going well but I'd be lying if I did as there are a lot of players on this board that we are going to have to compete our hearts out for. So we're probably going to need to win a ton of games if we're going to get them. And against Iowa State, we improved to 2-0. I haven't even stepped into a game yet and things are already going very well. So I'm going to be comfortable simming against Rutgers. And now that we're 3-0, I am no longer on the hot seat. While we're hot, I'm going to schedule everybody for a visit against Michigan State. And even though they're ranked, they're 1-2. So this is our chance to make a statement. This could single-handedly be a program-changing game. And it looks like they are pressing us from the start. We're going to see if our receivers are fast enough. Donovan Leary throws it up, and look at that. Bryant comes down with it for a huge touchdown. What a play to start the game. Now that this team's not like a 74 overall, it's actually pretty fun to play with. Leary is still so slow, and I'm used to always having a quarterback that can scramble, so that's been a difficult adjustment for me. All I'm gonna say is this year's team is actually really good, and I don't think it's enough to win a Big Ten championship, but you never know. They are putting up a ton of points, and this dominating performance was perfect for visit week. Almost Almost every player that we wanted ended up committing because of it as you can see all of these high overalls that are going to come in next season and now it's time for our biggest game ever. They're ranked as the number one team in the country and if we're going to have a chance in this one Devin Leary's protection is going to have to be good. He's already a bit shaken up he can't even tell which receiver is which and I don't know what's going on here but somehow we've given up a safety. What was that play? Clearly that is not the start we needed and now we're just going to have to lock up. It's never easy to stop. Caleb Williams but right now that should have been an interception and he really got away with one there. If we're gonna somehow win this football game it is crucial that we get points on this drive and so far they've sent a lot of blitzes our way and we're just gonna get around it by doing stuff like this. This is a huge drive. We've moved down the field so well so far. Scott is going to get down to the one, and we're going to bust it in here. The issue is just going to be stopping this USC offense, and I am trying my hardest. Another third down, and please, someone make the tackle. What a hit! And that is huge that we held them. Now we can get points before the half. That's going to be a great throw, but you have got to hold on to that. This one drive could get us back in the game, and it looks like we have someone deep. Donovan Leary with the dot, and once again, we drop the ball. This was the drive that we needed to get points, and now we're we're not going to be able to do so. Just not a good half of football. And with about four minutes remaining, we're still behind by a decent bit. They're able to press us to where we can't do anything. And what a catch. I certainly was not expecting him to hold on to that. Now we just need to get a couple more big plays. What a great decision to hold on to it and wait. And I'm hoping the dreams of an undefeated season here in year two are not over yet. That is a beautiful laser. So all we're going to need is one defensive stop. I'm confident that we can get it. Come on, boys. We just need to do it one time. They're already starting to drain the clock, though. And I ran commit. I probably should not have done that. It's okay, though. We're still in it. And this time the run commit works. And here on third and 11, they're actually going to go with the pass instead of the run and he had way too much time in the pocket there's someone wide open that's it wait there's a flag what is it we just got completely bailed out they are going to get to wind out the clock which i find to be a bit unfair but they took a delay of the game well it looks like they're still going to run and he's going to get them all the way back into field goal range and that was a wild sequence of plays but we're going to get a chance managing the clock is going to be very important we can only get first downs because at least those will stop the clock for us i think we have someone here what a play and that was such a tight window to throw into but Donovan Leary got it done I'm gonna need to get out of bounds here come on now we're down to seven six five four oh no I'm just gonna throw it away and that's at least gonna give us a chance at one final Hail Mary 
They got pressure in so fast though, the throw doesn't make it there, and we're gonna fall to USC. At this point, I'm just gonna end up simming to the Northwestern game because we have gotta play that one to win the challenge. And so far, the sim is going well. And I cannot believe this, but even though we are nine and two going into week 14, we are nowhere to be found in the top 25 polls. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I know that Minnesota isn't a great loss, but we still deserve to be ranked with our record. It is very important that we are able to take down our rivals today. And as long as we can go down the the field and get points, that field goal is huge as we'd be able to get on the board first. Pat Bryant, one of our wide receivers, has 20 touchdowns this season. I'm going to be throwing it up to him a ton today as he scores another, which is going to put him in the record books. With Northwestern about to score, it's looking like we are going to need a lot more of those today, and there's just no one getting in any pressure. However, once again, they are coming out in press man-to-man -man coverage, and we're going to have someone deep. I'm not sure which receiver this is. That was a terrible underthrow, but he's going to break the tackle and dive into the end zone. We've honestly done a good job so far, and to end the first half, I'm hoping to get into the end zone here. I might go for it on fourth and goal, but it was just a little too far out for my liking. All I'm gonna say is this game has never been close, and we're just gonna go for even more catches. What a play! What a catch by Pat Bryan! I mean, he just mossed the guy! I cannot believe he came down with that catch still, and just to rub it in their faces, we are gonna run up the score at the end of the game. Well, the rivalry series is tied up one-to-one -one now, and now I feel like we have a better chance of completing the rivalry challenge. Another challenge I've always faced is protecting my privacy when using the internet, but thankfully since I found out about the sponsors of today's video, NordVPN, which is the best VPN service, I felt a lot more secure. As you all know, I'm always using the internet to create content for you all, so it is super clutch that NordVPN's threat protection shields me from malware, ads, and any other virus that I could get. It's huge for protecting my privacy, and if you want to do the same, I'd recommend getting NordVPN today. And I use them because not only are they the fastest VPN, but they also don't track or share what you do online, and your data is always protected by next generation encryption. Of course, I have a special offer for you all, is you can go to nordvpn.com slash Bordeaux and get a huge discount on a two-year plan by using my code Bordeaux. You can get a two-year plan plus four months free by clicking the link in my description, and there's also a 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee, so check it out right now at nordvpn.com slash Bordeaux and take control of your internet. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rebuild. I find it crazy that we went 10 and 2 and we still are not ranked, so I'm sensing a ton of disrespect from the rest of the country, but Donovan Leary passed for 43 touchdowns, and Pat Bryant definitely ended his career with a bang. He'd go on to win the Bolitnikoff, and I honestly cannot believe he wasn't a part of the Heisman race. We did make the Cotton Bowl against Kansas, but I don't really feel like going into this game. We're gonna end up winning anyway, and I think that brings up a good point that most bowl games are pretty pointless now. Unless you make the college football playoffs, most most players are sitting out of these bowl games anyway, and there's not really a purpose. I don't know, that might just be my personal opinion because I don't really watch bowl games, but let me know what you all think in the comments. And we had two players drafted into the NFL, and recruiting-wise, I am going all in on five-star Mike Colbert. He's gonna end up signing to the team, giving us a top 10 recruiting class by just recruiting in Indiana and Illinois. It looks like Mike Colbert's bound to be a great receiver, and now that the team is starting to get deeper, I'm expecting us to have an even better season this year. There ended up being a lot more talent between just the states of Indiana and Illinois than I was honestly expecting, but I cannot complain because in the end, it ended up working out for us. We are projected to finish third in the Big Ten West, so I'm just going to assume that we're going to cruise through these first couple weeks of the year, and that's exactly what ended up happening. Against Notre Dame, I wish I could jump in, but the goal for this season is to just win a conference championship, so I have to sim it, and even though we lost, I don't think that result will affect our season. In week five, we are playing at the Spartans, and we are going to win by 17. That's going to give us momentum going into our game against Michigan. And since they're undefeated, we're going to need it. Just from the way this game has started, it's going to be a shootout. And now that we don't have our star wide receiver anymore, I'm not sure if I'm all here for it. We're going to have to go through the halfbacks instead. And I just noticed that Anderson is a monster. He's huge. And I'm sure he'd probably plow right through me. All right, it is third and nine. Tight end, wide open. Donovan Leary delivers the dot. And now we're starting to move the ball. That is what we needed. We're no longer running we're passing and so far so good but now it's third and goal and I'm gonna throw it to the running back who makes the catch helping us tie up the game it just doesn't seem like it's gonna last for very long though and what did I say Michigan is scoring points at an alarming rate and now we're gonna have to figure out how to do the same but it just seems like it's gonna be very hard to keep up I am trying my best this is great defense here 
and somehow they almost made a play there. It's unfortunate that they're still going to go up 10, but you know what? We're going to have a chance to score points before the half, and that's a great throw. Tight window, but we get away with it, and now Michigan is pressing our wide receivers. I don't know if we can beat them this season, and... Yeah, we can't. It was a lot more fun when we had a guy that could beat the press, but instead we don't. So Donovan Leary is just going to have to continue to thread the needle, and that's exactly what he is doing. I'm going with a halfback screen here. They sent way too many people, and Anderson is going to get out, and he's going to break free down to the five. This is our chance to get right back into the game, and that's a score. If they score on this last play of the half, I'm going to lose my mind. We have way too many guys back there, and they did not just come down with that. Are you kidding me? It just seems like nothing is going to go our way, but you know what? At least we get ball to start the third quarter and I think we have a receiver deep please be a good throw how do you underthrow that Donovan come on as you can tell it's starting to go very badly for us and our hopes of pulling off the upset are starting to look less and less likely we are going to need points on this drive and we have a receiver deep maybe this is where the game turns around and we get right back into it spoiler alert Michigan scored a touchdown right after that I threw an interception and now they're about to score again in the end it just felt like winning wasn't meant to be for us but at least we still have a decent chance of winning the Big Ten now since USC's already lost two games and we're at home for this one I do feel comfortable in simming it but maybe I shouldn't have I was trying to save the two games I was going to jump into for Iowa and Wisconsin but instead I'd pretty much call this season a wrap unless we end up winning out and we do beat UCLA which is huge since almost everyone in the conference has two losses and all we'll need to do is win out until we get to this Wisconsin game to potentially make the Big Ten championship I'll also be scheduling every remaining recruit for a visit that week and I feel like I need to save the last two games I can step into for Northwestern and the Badgers so I'm just gonna have to sim to week 13 and we're gonna have to see what happens so far things are going good as we beat Nebraska but we're gonna lose at Iowa and I need to make this a lesson to not save my games till the end of the year next season at this point in the year I would say all hope is lost but we are gonna beat Wisconsin and somehow we are competing for a Big Ten championship the craziest part about all this is you're probably wondering why there's two of me but I went in to sim the rest of the Big Ten results to make sure it was confirmed and I accidentally simmed the game again so thank goodness we won this game and by a lot because I would have felt like a real idiot if I accidentally sim the most important game of this rebuild and we didn't win and it's time to hop into what could be a program changing game for us the Buckeyes are undefeated on the year and so far I've been able to see why as they have moved down the field with ease with this amazing QB considering they beat the Wolverines I'm gonna assume this game is gonna be like that one where it's gonna be a high scoring battle and pretty much if we want to win this one we are gonna have to score every possession but Miller is gonna break free here and he is going all the way down to the 20. I was kind of hoping he could juke somebody out there, but after three bad passes in a row, we're going to have to take three. I think it'll be very important that we get a touchdown on this possession, but we do have an open wide receiver, Beatty, getting down to the 50. And I'd hate to go away from the run, but this is what works for us as passing is kind of our thing. And Miller is breaking free there. And it seems like he is by far the best wide receiver on this roster, but he does not seem to be out here on third down. So somebody else is going to have to step up and of course, that's a bad throw. What are you doing, Donovan Leary? That could have been a touchdown. Now it's a turnover. And our Big Ten championship hopes are slowly crumbling away unless we can get a stop, which again, we're able to do. I'm going to see if Miller can bust one out here. That is a great route, and that is an amazing catch. I'm pretty much just going to rely on him to bust whatever he needs to, whether that's the coverage or anything else. That is a beautiful throw to Miller. And the Ohio State defense is starting to get very exposed. Continue to pass dots. What a throw. If we're being honest, that probably should have been an interception and... Oh, there it is. Of course, they get it back. I'm starting to think that with my play style, I might need to sub somebody in for Donovan Leary as he just can't run. And I'm just not great with a pocket quarterback. I'm going to try to pick up the first down here and it's a drop. That literally could have been it. I think it's pretty obvious how this game is going to end. But at the end of the day, this is year three of five. So we still have two more seasons. And I think we've made a lot of progress as a program. We just need some faster guys and some better linemen. I had to try to throw it away there. That is going to be game, and I might make a switch at starting quarterback. Although Donovan Leary has been so good for us in his career, Serge Wilcox is only one overall worse than him, and he has 86 speed. The sophomore could end up being the key to our success, which would be amazing, and I still don't know what I'm going to end up doing. Our best wide receiver, Sean Miller, is trying to declare for the draft, but I'm going to convince him to come back. And I cannot lie to you all, recruiting has gone so much better than I ever thought it would, but it turns out the states of Illinois and Indiana produce a ton of solid football talent, and these training 
polling results are going to be very important as they're going to decide who the starter is next year. At quarterback, we have 296 overalls. And even though his accuracy is so much lower, I feel like I have got to go with junior Serge Wilcox. It's a risky switch, but this is the best team we have ever had. And Donovan Leary's 43 speed is just really holding him back, so I made the change. And it's time for his first real test. The Wolverines beat us last season, so hopefully the quarterback change can make a difference for us this year. And the offense already feels 10 times better with a quarterback that can take off. He can make plays like this. And that's going to set up touchdowns that just couldn't have happened last season. We also get to run the read option this year. And so far, we have looked very good today on both sides of the ball. They are trying to throw it deep on us, though. And Peters is going to get down to the 20. So that is unfortunate because we almost got another third down stop there. And that's the risk of running man to man. So this time I went with a zone. And it looks like it is clamping up as we knock that ball down. We're not going to give up any easy points today. And if we could get points on this drive, that would be absolutely massive for us because we'd be able to take a three possession lead on the Wolverines, but we're not going to get it. So to end the half, we really need to hold the Wolverines to just three points here, but they are so close to the end zone and I cannot get anybody out there to stop him. This one has been way too close for my liking, but we still have a one point lead here at the end of the third. And I have a feeling that we're going to be all right, but we just need to get a touchdown here and what a play. I could not have asked for a more perfect call there. And now they're trying to scramble with their quarterback. Hit him hard. Come on, hit him. That should be a fumble. I don't get it. He should have lost that ball there, but it's whatever. And on third and six, I think this defense is going to clamp up. Their quarterback has nowhere to go. So on fourth and six, what are they going to go with? It looks like it was a wide receiver screen. What is going on? Someone sacked the quarterback. It should not have taken that long to get a stop, but at least we did. And now we're to the point where we just need to try to run out the rest of this clock. I can feel the wind coming. We just need a couple more first downs. Wilcox is going to get to the 50, but since he's marked short of the first, I'm going to go with the fake punt and come on. Come on, make the right throw. No, that might have been a terrible play call, but I was feeling aggressive. It's all right. We can still get some stops on the Wolverines. And once again, we have them stuck on fourth down. Come on, boys, we lock up. So we're pretty much in control of the rest of this game, and we're just going to run out the clock. There is nothing that Michigan can do to stop us from winning. And could this finally be our year to make some noise? I mean, we're already ranked in the top 25, and this year I'm going to be much smarter about the games that I decide I'm going to step into. Obviously, I shouldn't need to against Hawaii, but against number three Penn State, I have to. This game impacts how the rest of the year goes goes for us. And we're about to have a real test of how good we are. All right, it's time for our first possession and Donovan Leary is in the game. What on earth has happened to our normal quarterback? I'm a little bit confused, but that's a great throw. And it turns out somehow Serge Wilcox has a torn pectoral for the next five weeks. That is not what I was expecting to see when I hopped into this game. So now this just got 10 times harder because I am not good with a quarterback that cannot scramble. That is a great throw though. And I'd say now that we're inside the 10, I'm just going to go with a ton of runs. It doesn't help that our star halfback is out for the season as well. But you know what? The offense is still moving and we'll be okay. I mean, we're taking a three possession lead here. Here. And the defense has just been incredible so far. I say that as we give up a first down, but Penn State still hasn't crossed midfield yet today, and we're doing so good. They say that defense wins championships, and I'm not gonna lie, they could be correct about that. Now they're getting another first down, but I am not even worried. Everything in a box, in a box! I know it's not even halftime yet, but this one already feels like it's gonna be wraps. And in the end, I did give up one touchdown, but we're gonna improve to 4-0, which is gonna get us into the top 10 in the country. Now the unfortunate part is this season, compared to last year, everybody in the Big Ten is playing amazing. And even though we have five ranked opponents left, I can only choose one of these games to jump into. I got us off to a hot start, but now the Sim has to take over. And against USC, we're going to win by three in overtime. And we are very lucky that we got that result. Now, Texas is an out-of-conference opponent, so I do feel like I need to go ahead and skip through this one, but we're going to lose by four. So in order for us to bounce back, I feel like I have got to play against UCLA. I did not want to waste the last game of the season. I could play in this early, but with that loss to Texas, I feel like it is all on the line this week against the Bruins. To still have a chance at making the college football playoffs, we pretty much have to win this one, and I feel like on fourth and one, we're going to have to go with it. Donovan Leary is going to make it down to the one, and I do not know why I ran with him in the clutch, but at least it worked. Honestly, this entire first half has been pretty close, but I'm going to test that one deep safety there. He can't cover both guys, and Miller's going down to midfield. That's how you have to read these defenses and once again, they press Sean Miller, but he's not open and I'm gonna turn the ball over. That's a terrible interception. 
Someone, please make a tackle on him, he's out at the 30. And what a terrible ending to the second quarter. Ever since that moment, it's just seemed like everything's gone downhill for us. We're about to get held on defense again until Colbert somehow gets us the first. That is game changing. He was about to be locked up there and that juke move was filthy. Now we're going to be throwing it for another 20. And this is the first momentum swing we have had in a long time. I'm continuing to stay in hurry up mode because I want to throw a touchdown and that is a dot. We just got right back in this game and we're even going to get the two. Unfortunately though, they've just gone down the field so quick. And so now we're going to have to go down and get another touchdown of our own. But you know what? UCLA is confident that they can press us and they cannot, but Donovan Leary misses the throw. How do you miss that? We literally should have had a touchdown on that play, but now we got to keep moving. I've decided that I am going to wind down the clock in this game. We're almost under a minute and a half, and I want to make sure that when we get into the end zone here, the Bruins don't have a chance to get the ball back. 14 seconds remaining now. I have an open receiver. He catches it, and we're going to be taking a three-point lead. Well, I am glad that I stepped into this game, but the rest of the season is going to rely on Sim, and these final five games are completely out of my hands. I'm just going to Sim through them. We do beat Nebraska, and we ended up beating Iowa by a ton. Next up is number three, Minnesota, and we're going to lose by four. I have a feeling that might end up ruining our Big Ten championship hopes, but it turns out it doesn't, as in week 14, we're sitting at the top of our division. That means the only thing we need to go our way is our rivalry game to make the Big Ten championship and we're gonna win by 10. I really wish that I didn't have to sim that one, but at least it completes the second challenge of the video. And I'm almost certain if we end up winning that, we're gonna make the college football playoffs. Unfortunately, we still haven't even had a player on the Heisman watch. And once again, we're matched up against Ohio State. We need to finally get a Big Ten championship. And I think this will be our best chance yet because now we have Serge Wilcox back in the lineup. His speed is gonna help us get to the outside on these options and actually run the ball today, which is huge because when you mix it up with the passing, it's almost unstoppable. We are flying down the field right now and that blitz was fast. But you know what? I don't think they're going to hold us to three. There's an open receiver and it's a bad throw. It turns out that Serge Wilcox accuracy is going to cost us, but I think that price is worth it. 100%. Now we're giving up a big play. Come on, Scott. You cannot get burnt by Jermaine Burton's brother. And now we're going to be going down by four. If I remember anything from last year's game they outscored us so we need to make sure that we can keep up with them and Butler is going to get a huge play there. I'm not saying that this is our season to win it all, but it sure feels like it could be. And look at Sean Miller streaking down the field to the end zone. That was the exact turnaround that we needed. And then our defense immediately forced an interception. I'm going to be throwing one right back to them. Wonderful. You know what? I just really do not want to talk about it at all. We're going to hit their QB. And with three minutes left in the second, it's going to be tied up at 10. I'm going to try to end the half with just one smooth, methodical drive. And hopefully I'll take the rest of the clock with me as I do so, these pitches are not working too well anymore. So I'm kind of surprised that they are coming out and pressing us on third down. No safety help over the top. That's going to have to be a bomb to Sean Miller, but he drops it. My entire plan to run out the rest of the half just failed, and they're going to be getting the ball in great field positioning. Come on. This is the most important game in program history. A spot in the playoffs is on the line, and it just hasn't been a very good day so far. The goal is just to end the second quarter with at least three, and as long as it's at least a tie game, I think we'll be okay, but we have somebody deep. He burnt the safety, Colbert, into the end zone. Why do they keep on pressing us? It doesn't even make sense at this point. I mean, at some plays it works, but other plays, we have wide open players. And I think we're just going to be in a great position to fake him out and run in for another score. This entire second half has gone our way so far. Now we have them on the goal line. That's an interception. You threw it right to me. What are you doing? Let's go. Boys, things could not be looking better for us. And now I'm just going to play the clock management game. We have all the time in the world. So why not run out as much time as we can while we have the ball? Thompson breaking free. And in the end, we're walking away with our first Big Ten championship. Now next year is going to be our only chance to win the Heisman Trophy. And with that win, I thought we were a lock for the playoffs, but apparently Minnesota got the spot over us. I guess the committee decided that since the Gophers beat us head to head, they're going to put them in. But that doesn't seem fair since UCLA made it as well. And we ended up winning the division and the Big Ten Championship. Unfortunately, that means we've only completed three of the six video challenges. So that means everything is all going to come down to next season 
and I don't even care that we won the Cotton Bowl. I feel like we just got completely robbed of a college football playoff spot, and with the loss of so many highly ranked players, next year is going to be very difficult. It's nice to see players like Sean Miller get drafted, but he is going to be greatly missed as I don't think anyone besides maybe Martin Butler can replace his production. It is good to know that Serge Wilcox will be a 99 overall going into this upcoming year, because I think he's going to be our best chance at a Heisman, especially with an offensive coordinator that maxes out all of his stats. Now, it would only make logical sense to give us a cupcake schedule to start out the year, and I'm just going to have to hope that's enough to get our quarterback into the Heisman race, because right now, Joe Thompson's the only guy in here. We are projected to finish fourth in the country, which should be a good sign, but we all know that crazy things happen in college football, so that is not a guarantee. Now, of course, we are going to beat Ohio, and we cruised by Akron and Southern Illinois, but next up was undefeated Penn State, so I feel like this is a great game for me to jump in and play. We're also ranked number one in the country right now, which is something to note, and the play action did not really work, but I'm still going to somehow get out of there for a few yards, which is exactly why it's so important that I have a fast quarterback to use. Serge Wilcox has been amazing so far, and now he's going to throw an interception. Great. Great read there, buddy. Really appreciate that one. That is the last time I'm going to hype him up. Now we just have to rely on the defense, and they did get us the ball back at about the 50, but we're going to be held to just three points. It seems like this game is on pace to be a really low scoring one, which I do not like, because if Serge Wilcox is going to win the Heisman, he's going to need to put up some amazing stats, and so far nothing has come easy. However, he is making a read there to Kraft. Kraft is going to break free. He's going to go into the end zone. And I just hope that Penn State doesn't get a touchdown of their own here, but they're going to. It's all right, though, because I think we're going to end the first half with a touchdown of our own. And what is going on? This was potentially the worst route that I have ever seen. All he had to do was keep running straight and we would have been fine. But now we're getting the pass off and it's another drop. That means we're only going to go up 13 to 10. And I hope that here in the third quarter, we figure out how to actually score. Come on, that's my man. And we're going back down by four. I just need the game to open up. Wilcox is going to escape the pressure. He almost got sacked, but he's going to fumble the ball. Are you kidding me? Absolutely nothing is going our way right now against the Nittany Lions. He's, how? How is he getting a first down there? I am in shambles and we need to get a stop here. Everyone is in a box. Please do not give something up. Are you kidding me? If things are going to change, the change is going to have to come soon and it's going to start with that amazing pass. I am locked in right now. We cannot afford to lose this game. Wide open drag right there. Take it to Butler all day. Take the 20 yards. And it's time to pass for some touchdowns so Serge Wilcox can win the Heisman. What? A throw to Kraft. Down to the five. And this is what I like to call the perfect drive. We got all the way down to the five and Serge Wilcox runs it in. Now this two-point conversion is just as important and Carter is going to drop it. But we are set to turn this game around. We're just going to have to get the ball back. Their hurry up offense has not been easy to stop. I can't act like it has. And of course, they're going to continue to move it. They went in hurry up mode down the entire field on us. And the only reason we're getting a break is because it's the end of the third quarter. This is where we have to make our mark on defense, but nobody's over there. They're going to be getting down to the one. And we did get them to the third and goal, but we're not going to get the stop. I cannot believe we are on the verge of losing our undefeated season. Their man-to-man -man defense has been killer on us. And unfortunately, they are smart enough to not press us, which gives up the chance for big plays. Instead, I had to methodically move the ball down down the field, but we're going to get almost into the end zone, and thank goodness we're going to punch it in. Now, it is going to start coming down to if we can get third down stops, but we're going to get one right here. We have plenty of time. Now, we just have to make smart reads all the way down the field, and I'm just going to roll out and throw up a bomb here. I'm going to try to get it out, and it's going to be wide open. Cooper is going to make the catch. He's going to make a man miss. He's down to the 17, and I probably should have managed the clock better, but we're flying down the field, and that has to be a catch. Third and goal now. It's man-to-man. -man. Once again, he is open, and this time, Cooper's going to hold on to it down to the two. This one has been a roller coaster of emotions, but I think we're going to win. Wilcox is going to get into the end zone. And the two point conversion is going to be very important, which we are going to not get. It'll all come down to defense. And I feel like we might have the defense for it. Come on, that's got to be an interception. If they get in the field goal range, we're going to be in trouble. And Stewart just got burnt. Okay, let him get in. Let him get in. No, you morons. They're just going to run out the clock now. Please let him just get in. I feel like that had to be done since they got so far down the field. Now we just need the two-point conversion stop and they're going to get it. This is so frustrating. I thought we had the game locked up. Now we're in trouble. Why is that guy glowing? Whatever, I am not going to ask questions. We just need to keep throwing dots. And with about 30 seconds left in one timeout, I feel like we are still in a decent position. I had someone open deep but I'm just going to have to scramble with Serge anyway. He's going to get out of bounds. And apparently he didn't. The clock is still running. It must have stopped because it was a first down. Come on, there is only 12 seconds left now. 
that's going to be a bad throw, and all of a sudden my heart is pounding. They didn't cover it. They didn't cover it. Craft! No! I swerved that wrong there. That is my fault. And now there's only five seconds remaining. Throw it. Throw it. Hit the seam. Catch it! Touchdown! Anthony Cooper holds on to that! And this is going to turn into the game that will never end. We ended up being on defense first, and hopefully we can get a stop. It is third down, and that's definitely going to be a field goal. Well, the ball is going to be in Serge Wilcox's hands, and it's time to see what he can do in the clutch. This would be huge for his Heisman race. Come on, Colbert. Hold on to it. That's game. First play of overtime. We are winning. We are staying undefeated. And that feels amazing. Now we can just sit back and sim this rivalry game that I didn't play once in this rebuild. Indiana just never made it competitive. And so far, the Heisman race is going exactly how we need it to. But of course, it's never going to be easy for long. The Big Ten is so difficult now. And after that last game took forever, I didn't want to show too much of this one. But just know it is a shootout as USC is going to score 30. 31 before the half. I'm honestly not sure if I can continue to keep up with them, but I'm going to have to do something about this, and we're getting down to the 40, and I'm hoping in a miracle fashion we can get a field goal before halftime. That would be huge. Wait, wait, wait. Butler, keep on going. Go down to the 15. We could literally score a touchdown here. Probably dumb to go for it, but I am, and he's going to get to the one. I really do not know how to feel about this play call, but I am being aggressive today, and it's going to pay off. 59 combined points at the half, and I think we're just going to continue to score. Wilcox is going to roll out here. He's going to run in again. And now we actually have a lead. It's just been a back and forth game. That's going to be a bad run. And I feel like we are in a position to hold them on the goal line to just three points here. It's all going to come down to this third and goal. I'm using the slant, but who is on him? Whatever. We're just going to have to respond back ourselves. This is a third down play, so we're going to need a big run. And thank goodness for Surge. I am fighting my butt off to try to get this team that I've rebuilt a national championship, but we're going to have to keep on making plays like this, getting first downs. And hopefully, if you're an Illinois fan, you are happy with what I've done with this team. You obviously won't be fully satisfied until we win it all, but this is the fifth year, and we should be on track to do so, assuming we get into the end zone here, which we're gonna do. It'll all come down to how the defense plays, and this is a great job of locking up Young here. Fourth and 12 now. I think we got him. We should. Please, somebody. We're good. Now, all we really need to seal it is a first down. I'm assuming that they're gonna think I'm running here, but I went with the pass. The running back is open, and Thompson is going to end the game. With USC having no timeouts remaining, we're able to simply run out the rest of this clock. And on the final play, I am gonna go for the touchdown just to potentially help out Serge Wilcox's Heisman hopes. And... It is going to result in an interception. That's going to hurt them instead. Wonderful. At least we still ended up getting the win. And now I can only play one more of these six games. So there's going to be a lot of simming going on. I don't feel like we need to jump into the UCLA one. We're going to win by 10. And honestly, I am so confident in this team to finish the rest of the regular season undefeated that I am confident in just simming it all. Well, what did I say? We ended up going 12-0 in the regular season. And Serge Wilcox is still on top of the Heisman watch list. If he wants to secure it, though, he'll have to play good in the Big Ten Championship, and this is going to be a hard game. Both teams are undefeated going into this game. They're pressing us, so I'm hoping our players are fast enough to burn the corners, but they're not, and we're still going to make the catch anyway. Butler has been by far our best receiver, I'd say, this season, and so far, this has been the perfect start to the game. We're going to keep getting first down plays. However, they have us on third and ten here, and I'm not sure if anyone's open. I do see a guy, but the linebacker touched it, so unfortunately, we're going to be stuck taking three. I'm not going to lie, it has been a slow offensive game so far. We still have not scored since, but that's going to be a touchdown. And since Michigan scored again, we're kind of in a position where we just have to match them. Now, the offensive line did not do a great job there, but Wilcox's ability to escape the pocket is paying off, and now our running back's going to get another 15. Joe Thompson's honestly been a very underrated part of this program, because for years now, he's been coming in and making a difference, but I need to just focus on playing because we cannot be taking sacks on third down there. Hopefully this is going to be a dot. It's underthrown. And it said this was out of our kicker's range, so I'm going to be going with it. And who is McDowell? This is not our quarterback. What happened to Wilcox? It says he will return soon. And of course, now I have the option to put him in. I would have just attempted the field goal if I knew the backup QB was going to be in the game. And now we're going into the half down by four. It's all right, though. I am confident in the defense, so we'll be okay. And now that Serge Wilcox is back in the game, we should be all fine. 
He's going to be finding Butler once again for a huge play. And we have 15 first downs to Michigan 6, so it's kind of upsetting that they're beating us. Fortunately, that shouldn't last for long, though, as we're down here on the goal line. And even if we don't get it on third down, I'm going to go for it. But I have this slant, and that's a catch. Illinois is back on top. And we've given Michigan that good D for about 30 minutes, but we need to do it for the rest of the game. And there's a great tackle. If Moses can part the Red Sea, he sure can part this Michigan defense. And on this punt return, he's going to have no speed on him. What? the heck? That'll certainly be the last time he ever returns a kick. And I'm just glad that we've still been able to move this ball down the field. No one got open on their routes here, but I'm still going to sling it. What a catch by Colbert. And he should not have come down with that. I mean, he had dudes all over him, but I guess that's what he likes. He performed under the pressure. And if we can give it to them again here on third down, we're going to have all the momentum going our way, which is great because now there's a new kick returner back there and he does have speed. He's going to get to the outside. He's going to get us down to the 30. And I know it didn't seem like it was going to happen at the beginning of the game, but I think the undefeated season is going to stay alive. Serge Wilcox has started to play really well. He's going to take this one in. And I'm not sure if the Wolverines are even going to score again. Look at this, boys. That should have been a pick. But we still got them on fourth and eight, and a stop here would pretty much end the game. No way. Luckily for us, I don't think running through the rest of the clock is going to be an issue. And the Fighting Illini are back-to-back -back Big Ten champions. Now, the real moment of truth will be if Serge Wilcox won the Heisman or not. And since he was able to do so, along with getting us into the college football playoffs, I'm able to knock off two more of the video's challenges. Our first opponent is going to be Auburn, and hopefully we're going to come out on top. It has taken years of rebuilding, but I finally have Illinois in the college football playoffs in year number five. It's been a great rebuild so far, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to turn them around this quick, but it happened, and I'm pretty sure this has been the most successful rebuild I have had just based off of record by season. That's an amazing throw, and Serge Wilcox gets us on the board first. Last week, defense was the story of our success, and this week it's going to have to be as well. On third down, we're not going to get the stop. And once again, we have them on a third and 12 exactly, and they're going to not get it. Those are the exact clutch tackles that we need, and now it's time to go down the field and get some points. Wilcox breaks one sack. He's going to evade the pocket, and he breaks another sack. It's going to be a terrible throw. So I am sorry. I thought that was about to be a huge highlight play, but instead it wasn't, and now I'm throwing an interception. You've got to be kidding me. Obviously, they'd end up scoring from that, but I am determined to make that the only points they score in this game, and they are going for it on fourth and one here. I am run committing up this gap, and that might not have paid off. Wait, wait, stop him, please. He's short, he's short. No way they gave him the first. I am going to challenge that just because I can do so. And this replay doesn't even show the first down marker. These refs are just trying to make this game closer than it's supposed to be at this point. But we're gonna make the best out of the situation by hopefully holding them to three. And there is nobody around. No way, they just gave that up. I'm convinced that I'm just incredibly unlucky. But you know what? I'm gonna continue to run commit and it's gonna not pay off. It feels like almost every game I have stepped into in this rebuild has been a close one and I don't think this one's going to be any different but that is going to be a beautiful throw to Cooper Cooper is going to break free how did he get out of that for like an 80 yard touchdown and that's going to set a school record breaking Donovan Leary's record so all around a great moment in the video and a lot of people will say that I should be yelling there but I'm going to do my soft scream instead because I don't think my neighbors want to hear me at 3 a.m. there's still about a minute left on this clock before the end of the first half and they're throwing it deep our linebacker gets beat and I think the Tigers are going to end up tying the game they just moved the ball so well in the clutch so it would not surprise me if they got in here on third down but we played that read option and we're gonna have a a four point lead at the half. However, this kick return could change things. I didn't even think about that. Maybe it won't be a four point lead at the half. Maybe it will not be a four point lead at the half. Williams, keep on going. Please do not get caught. No. All he had to do was be just a little bit quicker. Throughout the entire third quarter, it's just stayed super tight. It's still a four point game, but I think we're going to score here. And that would be huge because if we get held to three, it's still one possession. But if we somehow get in, it's two. And that's a great catch. Anthony Cooper with his third score of the day. And with the pressure piling up on Auburn, I feel like we're going to be all right. They're going for it on fourth down. We stop him. Who is watching this one from his couch? And he's just thankful that it wasn't him in that situation. But we're going to get a huge run here. What a play. Serge Wilcox could be the best quarterback we have ever seen in one of these rebuilds. No way he just made that throw. Okay, I was about to say, that would have been crazy. Instead, he's put the pressure right back on the defense. And right now, everything seems fine. No, you, you need to pick it. Why are you standing in the area if you can't put your hands up? That is so, so frustrating. And now I feel like I'm choking this game. We're going to hopefully stop him. 
No way. Apparently their quarterback can just shed tackles from a 400 pound dude now, and I am not gonna let Auburn come back on us like we're the Indianapolis Colts. That one hurt to say, especially because I don't think the draft's gonna go well for us if you don't know I'm a Colts fan, but at least my virtual team for the time, Illinois, is about to be in the national championship. All we have to do is penetrate these holes correctly a few more times to get one more first down, and that run is gonna seal our spot in the national championship. It looks like we'll be taking on Colorado, and Deion Sanders really has has turned around their football program. It all comes down to this final game. And we're gonna be starting the game on defense against Aaron Richardson, who has been a Heisman finalist for the past couple seasons. And that throw off his back foot should tell you why. He is not gonna be easy to stop, so we're gonna have to score a ton today. And I'm gonna rely on Serge Wilcox to run outside the pocket and make plays. By the end of the first, we're down by three. But that isn't a bad thing because we've yet to be stopped on offense. I think in the long run, we'll be fine. I feel like we do have the better team here and Colbert is gonna run away from the ball. I made a mistake with the swerve catch. So maybe I should just shut my mouth and focus on actually winning. For two of the best offenses in the country, this has been a very slow start to the first half, but we all know that at some point things will eventually pick up and we need to be the first ones to do so. Wilcox gets sacked here, but I'm gonna shock everybody by going with the fake. Roll out with Darby. Scramble, scramble, no, keep going. No. Now we really need to get a stop on Colorado and those runs cannot work forever. Second and nine now. Another quarterback run, another tackle. It's so obvious what Aaron Richardson is trying to do, so I have a quarterback spy out there, and he's throwing us the ball. Moses, no! You've got to hold on to that. Now they're going to get three points out of it, and wait, 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 it's short. I feel like we have just gotten bailout after bailout. If we cannot get more points, I'm the only one you can really blame. Here, on second down, that's a laser of a throw. Butler makes a guy miss. Butler, going down to the 45. And Martin Butler has 144 receiving yards before the end of the first half, so tell me how we only have seven points. He makes the Moss catch there. And what a play by him, also setting the school record with this incredible catch. It is crucial that we score points at least on this drive, and there is way too much time in the pocket. Look at Wilcox, finding open receiver, Cooper, down to the four. And no, they're gonna hit us with a penalty. That is so unfortunate. I thought we had the big play that we needed, but we didn't get it, so now we need to go down the field this way. And I guess that's okay, because it seemed to work out for us, as we're gonna score anyways. Now we have them on a third and 13. They have to pick this one up and nobody is open. Their quarterback's fumbling the ball. What is going on? There is no way their kicker makes this. He short-legged the last one, but somehow he has the leg to kick it that far now. It's all right, we still have the advantage, and now I'm gonna have to step up in the pocket. Serge Wilcox escapes. This is what his speed can do for us. And I am so glad that I made the switch to having him in at quarterback. That pitch to Thompson could not have been more perfect. He's going to get us down to the 15. And now on the third and eight, I'm going to be looking straight at Butler. And of course, he is going to drop the ball into an interception. You've got to be joking. Colorado literally just got thrown a lifeline, but we're going to get the safety. What a play. I was not expecting to get through the gap that fast. And now it feels like we have a championship in our hands at this point. So we just need to be smart, run the ball, and drain out as much clock as possible. Watch this. Colorado's going to send every Everybody in for the run. We get him with the play action on the pass, and that's a solid 10 yard gain. I am out thinking Deion Sanders on every level right now, and at this point, I'm getting confident that his team is never gonna get to see the ball again. They just haven't been able to stop the run at all, and this fourth and three will seal it as long as we pick it up, which we are going to do. And that means I've successfully brought a national championship back to Illinois, which is gonna complete the final challenge of the video. And if you enjoyed this rebuild, there's another one that you can watch right here, and make sure to subscribe if you you haven't already.